Howdy Rock Buds, Papa here. Coming to you from the Third World Country Club National Park, camping in the Ram Van. Um, that's the name that for my property here with the minimalist cottage. And yes, I do occasionally comb my hair. Mm, a couple of times a year. Anyway, we've got another rock pile over here. Let's look at some of these rocks. Here's a lovely one that you've seen before. That purplish reddish brownish staining and the shiny white stuff tell us that this is qu quartz muscovite pyrite sericite schist and it represents uh, sand and mud that uh, fell on the underwater flanks of a volcano and that sand and mud was flushed through with hot hydrothermal water that carried um, iron and sulfur to uh, create the pyrite and converted muscovite that was here into sericite hydrothermal if you see quartz muscovite schist it doesn't have all this excuse me um, uh, pyrite and sericite in it then you know it was just sand and mud sediments that settled down and were metamorphosed here's a really pretty uh, piece of what you guys tell me Right, granite pegmatite. The white stuff here is probably potassium feldspar. The uh, gray stuff is quartz. And this mirror, shiny mirror stuff is mirror muscovite. Beautiful rock. Pegmatites form, granite pegmatites form when there's a lot of water in the magma and also um, a lot of um, volatile elements in there that encourage the formation of big crystals. You often find pegmatites around the edges of magma bodies. <clears throat> Here's a grayish rock, so let's check it for limestone with acid. Yeah, I'm getting a little, where'd it go? Getting a little fizz here. Let's check these interesting little spots. Yeah, they fizz like crazy. So we got limestone here with calcite streaks in it. Here's another side of that same rock and I'm testing it with acid and it does not fizz here. Now, that is interesting, but I noticed these, see the black splotches in here? That's dark mud blobs that got mixed in with this stuff. So this is probably limey mud and that's why you get fizzing in on one side of the rock, but not fizzing on the other. How about this guy? I see white specks, which would be feldspar, potassium feldspar, maybe some sodium feldspar. I see gray specks, quartz. I see dark specks, biotite, probably. So I would say this is... Um, weathered granite it might be weathered El El elberton granite let's get it over here where we can see it better and as you know weathered granite can look different from fresh unweathered granite okay here we have a lovely piece of meta tuff from the uh, carolina terrain geologic province or terrain. Let's get a close-up of it. I hope that's in focus. How can you tell Metatuff from sandstone? Well, with sandstone, with the hand lens, you can usually see the um, sand grains. And with with Metatuff, the way I recognize Metatuff is it's hard to see those sand grains. And also, um, there's gunk mixed in there. Dark spots and specks. And uh, also, if you could look close enough, I think with this Metatuff, I don't know if you can see tiny little sparkles down there. Those are quartz crystals, I believe. Tiny, tiny quartz crystals that form in this uh, tuff. What is tough? Metatuff? Metatuff is uh, mat felsic material which is rich in quartz and potassium feldspar that's blown out of a volcano um, and piles up 
and forms beautiful hoodoos after it's eroded. There's a lot of interesting tough out west. If you if you go to the island of Santorini in the Mediterranean Sea, which used to be the ancient colony of Atlantis. How do I know that? I've researched it, and I, that's what I believe. Anyway, about 1500 B.C., Santorini uh, erupted, and so the island of Santorini is just a gigantic pile of tuff. This is tuff that's been metamorphosed. Okay, here's one. Whoops. I see shiny stuff on it. Let's focus in on some of that if possible. Right here. What you're seeing is shine. It's it's silvery, not white, and it's shining. So this is a schist of some kind. See all that gray stuff? It's a real dirty schist. So I think that gray stuff is graphite. So I'm going to call this a graphitic schist. So where do graphitic schists, how do they come about? Well, the graphite is, is, is basically carbon. And um, in a schist, that, that carbon, that graphite carbon comes from organic material that's mixed in with the, uh, with the sand and silt and mud. And I'm pretty sure this graphitic schist is part of the uh, Western Blue Ridge Geologic Province, which represents the um, uh, rifting basins of, of Rodinia supercontinent, along with the volcanics associated with the rifting of the supercontinent Rodinia. Okay, here's one dark rock, heavy rock. Um, crystalline, which means that it's probably hard to it's hard to crack. I see a lot of black. It tells us mafic. And I see white in there too. But the white is not crystal spots. It's kind of ever so slightly little strings. Very short little strings. What does that tell us? That tells us that the white stuff is likely calcium rich feldspar. The black stuff is very likely hornblende or even pyroxene. So this is a mafic rock. Doesn't have metamorphic banding. I will call it diabase right off the top of my head, but it could be metadiabase, which would be amphibolite. But right now, I'm going to call it diabase. Diabase is a intru mafic intrusive rock that forms fairly close uh, underground, but fairly close to the surface. So you can see crystals, uh, but they're not anywhere near as big as the crystals in its deeper underground counterpart, which is called gabbro. This diabase is part of the rifting of supercontinent Pangaea, uh, where diabase actually does, uh, acts like, um, diabase dikes act like blowtorches that split a continent in two. Beautiful piece of unweathered granite, nice from the quarry, metamorphic granite. Um, <clears throat> this is Athens granite, nice. And that pink stuff, yes, is probably very, almost certainly potassium feldspar. If I see a pink feldspar in a rock, in a felsic rock, I'm going to call it potassium feldspar. Here we have a rock that we know is metamorphic because it has metamorphic banding. The white streaks are probably uh, sodium-rich feldspar. And the dark streaks, um, I'm not going to do it, but I know that a nickel will scratch the dark stuff. So what does that mean, make the dark stuff? Yes, biotite. A nickel coin will scratch biotite, but it will not scratch hornblende and it will not scratch pyroxene, two other dark minerals. So, since this is a metamorphic rock, where it's a gneiss, and I always shall call it biotite gneiss. Biotite gneiss is the metamorphic end product, most likely, of diorite, pluton, and andesite um, lava. Both intermediate um, in reaction. Okay, here's a kind of a 
interesting rock. Can you tell that it's got a kind of a greenish tinge to it? So I'm gonna see if my thumbnail will scratch it, and it does. So what does that tell you? A greenish tinged rock that's kind of soft in your, really soft in your thumbnail can scratch it. Well, that tells us ultramafic. Um, and an ultramafic rock that's that soft and green is going to be serpentinite um, or some uh, form of ultramafic rock. What happens? Where does ultramafic rock come from? Well, when continents crash, ocean crust and um, also what's underneath ocean crust, peridotite and dunite, which are the main rocks in the mantle, get shoved up on land. And as they do, it drastically, that shoving up on land drastically changes their temperature pressure regime. And they metamorphose via um, hydrothermal um, alteration into soapstone. If you go up to um, North Georgia, west of uh, Lake Burton on Highway 76, you can go, you, you come to the Popcorn Overlook. And that area and vicinity around there is just full of ultramafic rock, greenish ultramafic rock, serpentinite, and also there's asbestos. Asbestos is also an, a version, <clears throat> excuse me, of ultramafic rock. Okay, most excellent rock buddies, have fun with those rocks. And this is your rock papa saying happy rock hunting. Pop out.